Hi everyone, welcome to today's interview. Now, you know that I love talking to entrepreneurs and today I'm talking to Donna Glassberg. She is the founder of Orange Housing. The thing I want you to know about entrepreneurs, which you probably already know, is they solve problems. They have creative solutions for problems that they see and then it's their job to figure out how to put their solutions into the marketplace and make them real. Now, this trait of creative problem solving is what has kept Donna Glassberg in the forefront of real estate entrepreneurship for more than 25 years. And I want you to think about that. Over 25 years, what has happened in the domain of real estate? The internet was in its infancy 25 years ago. So she's been through dial-up internet, desktops versus laptops versus smartphones, Wi-Fi, apps, video, and in every iteration, Everything that's come down the path, Donna has had to be resilient and bounce back. And that's the reason I wanted to talk to her today because her business has been forced to change so many times with the times. And you would think that just renting a house is just renting a house, but it isn't. There's so much more to it. She has built resiliency into her business. And during these times of COVID-19, there's nothing we need more than resilient resiliency. And so that's why I wanted her here today to tell us about the struggles that COVID-19 brought upon her and how she used her creative problem solving skills to keep her business going, which is what we're all trying to do right now. So Donna, I hope I did you justice there with that introduction, but thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. It's kind of fun. And even though I've been in business 25 years, this is my first interview. So it's kind of fun to be doing something different. And yes, I agree with you 100% that see a problem, solve that problem. And that's what makes a good business. And to keep doing that throughout the whole life of your business. Yes. over And, and that's why I wanted to really talk to you because over and over again, you have, it's kind of like a pinball. You get, you're like, ping, okay, now we got to do this. Now we got to do this. Now we got to do this. So can you share with us a brief history of the problem that you saw in the marketplace all those many years ago? Well, first, when I moved here to Syracuse, I wanted to rent a place and finding out which neighborhood would work for me because we have so many unique neighborhoods in Syracuse to choose from. Uh, that was a challenge. And then finding apartments in the neighborhood to rent that were within my budget um, was challenging. And I did find something, but it was hard work and it wasn't what I expected. And then I moved again and moved again. And again, like a ping pong, I felt, you know, I, um, <laughs> I just, I loved Syracuse, but I didn't know how to navigate being new to the area. Um, there weren't as many resources out there as there are now. So I got into the real estate field as business and I worked and played and lived in the university neighborhood. And I would see students driving around, writing down numbers on homes that were for rent. And first I thought, wow, they have to be here to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And second, I knew a lot of landlords would keep their sign up all the time, even if it was already rented. So that's discouraging to take the time, drive around, write down numbers, and then find out the places are rented. and not, Or maybe call on them and they're out of your budget. Right. Or they're so a three-bedroom when you want a one-bedroom. Yes. What year are we talking here? 1996? So that was... Um, 85, 86, 87, when I saw that problem. But then in 96, my son was 10 years old and he got a computer and he was playing around and he called me into his room after he had been in there for hours. And he shows me a picture on the computer of himself and it says, I'm Josh and I like the color blue. I'm thinking that took you six <laughs> hours, but it kept him busy, so I was happy. <laughs> But then he said to me, mom, all my friends can see it on their computer. And it blew my mind because I didn't understand the internet fully. This was 1996 and there were only about 200,000 websites out there. Now there's something close to 2 billion. Wow. So it really has um, grown. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And just a year later, when I finally did launch my business, um, that 200,000 like had doubled, I believe, or maybe even more. It was like exploding in 96, 97. And it was the old dial up. I don't know if you had that where you'd actually hear oh, them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, that noise. And 
um, it took a long time for things to download, to get online, to download, and not everybody was able or capable to see it on the go, like now with mobile right, phones. Right. So SU saw the value in it, and they actually gave us a spot in the Student Shine Center without any charge. They called my office, which was my home, and they said, would you be willing to have a kiosk in the a Student Shine Center? which that just blew me away. And I knew I had solved a huge problem yes. for their students at that time. And because it was mainly students that had computers back in 96 and 97, they were the ones with the desktops. We catered more towards the people who were able to access us on computer. I but the this. international, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go, no, keep going. To the international no, the students. international students loved it because they didn't have to be here to yeah. see what their costs would be and what was available for them. Of course, we suggested strongly that they wait till they get here to rent something, don't rent sight unseen, but it was beneficial to them to have access before yes. they got here. You saw this need, you filled the need, you filled the need so well that actually the university brought you on kind of into a collaboration, That's such, which is such a big statement. I'm curious, had you always been entrepreneurial or are you just a creative problem solver in your everyday life? Actually, I've always been both. Mm -hmm. And my mother used to call me a trailblazer because I never wanted to go down the path that everybody else went down, the groomed path, she would say. She would say, why do you always have to go through the tall weeds and make your own path? And I'm like, but yeah, I always loved entrepreneurship. My brothers, I'm trying to think what year it was. I was probably 10, so 69, maybe 70. My brothers had newspaper routes for the neighborhoods with the wagon. And back in the day, a female was not allowed to be a newspaper carrier. So they kept it in their name after they had aged out. And I became the newspaper carrier. Um, but in their name, I couldn't have that little business, my first business Jeez. in my name. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so now we're talking, we're online we're, and, and you're just keeping moving ahead. Dial up is you know, gone. People get laptops, people get smartphones and you just keep iterating your business, right? It just keeps shifting and Correct. shifting and shifting to meet with the times. And I think that you're such a great example of somebody who does not stick her heels in and say, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. This is like, you're somebody who sees something changing and you hop on. And so I'd right. love to talk, like, I'd love to fast forward through all of that tech stuff and all of your creative problem solving. I'd love to fast forward to COVID-19 hits. Students right. are sent home. We don't know when they're coming back. How do you keep your business going during this time? Tell me some of the weight, some of the struggles that you guys experienced during this COVID-19 time. Well, in some ways we were lucky because I work from home, so I'm used to working from home. Mm -hmm. My business is online, which a lot of businesses that weren't online were forced to go online. So in some respects, I had an upper hand, mm -hmm. also being an established business for so many years. But to be honest with you, and there are some businesses that have really... Um, made COVID work for their business where they have like outdoor furniture or any indoor furniture, you know, people are staying home more. So in some respects, COVID kind of helped us because people needed orange housing more. They needed something that was more than a platform for rentals. Like all the competition that I have that came after me, like apartments.com and Craigslist and all of those, there's nobody you could call with an 800 number. Uh, uh, there's an 800 number. There's nobody you could really reach that knows the area is what I meant to say. Like a human. So we, people, yeah, to, there's nobody who, with you. to get on the phone with a human, someone who's experienced in real estate, someone who lives in the area, knows the area. I mean, those really, um, people were emotional and anxious and didn't know where to turn. And our, hand holding, so to say. Yes. And uh, I stepped up my hours for uh, phone and email. Uh, we answer the phones on weekends, night, nights, because a lot of people were working, hopefully during the day, 
or busy doing other stuff. And then after five, they wanted to deal with these problems, which, you know, SU's offices are closed after five. You can't get a hold of people. So it was, you know, in a sense, beneficial to our non-paying customers. We have two customers. The non-paying customers are the renters, and then our paid customers are the landlords. And the landlords and property managers um, are cutting back on their ads because they don't know what to do and if they want people in their apartments and how to deal with the COVID. So we're working harder for less money like most people. <laughs> right, right, right. But, it sounds like I've been talking all month to my, my clients about differentiating themselves and all of my content has been about your unique value proposition. And what I keep hearing from you is not only your responsiveness, like in answering the phone and your, but, but also your responsiveness to say, oh, I see a problem. Let me, let me shift the problem. So that's how you seem to differentiate yourself is that you are a human being living in the area and knowing it so well that right. people can come to develop trust with you. You really become probably right. like a guide to them. Right. I'm, I try to be very compassionate and understanding um, renters and landlords are totally opposite and have totally opposite goals and thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I try to understand both angles and put myself in both of their shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been a renter and I've been a landlord, so it, that comes easy to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's challenging uh, to try to help people at times, but I feel if I could help one person, it's worth it. Did you mention somewhere in our back and forth emails, I feel like I read about you buying some um, video equipment to help oh. your renters. Can you talk a little bit about that as a solution to the Yeah, problem? so renters, um, first of all, we were stay in place for a while. So we were told not to go out to either show up properties or look at properties. And people didn't want strangers in their home True. to look at their properties. and landlords and leasing agents didn't want to meet people. So video and pictures meant that much more. I mean, they always said pictures are worth a thousand words, but um, now it, it was really helpful and meaningful. And I did buy a 360 camera. Um, I have to say, I don't know if I got the results that I wanted. I'm not sure if the learning curve, um, was too much. I felt like it didn't really show mm. what I wanted, but we are, we did change and tweak a bunch of stuff on the site where before we used to not show one picture with the ad, you had to click on the listing and you'd see like 10 pictures. Mm -hmm. Now with each listing, we have one picture that they could see right away. Um, so the what I purchased and I was I've been trying not to purchase too much everybody's sure. looking to cut back on spending but what I purchased it works but I don't know if it works as well as I'd like it to okay. so we're still that's still in development okay. but it was a 360 camera okay and we're still using it and we're still also using just regular photos You've you've uh, you've seen how visually stimulated people are and how how, they, how responsive they are to that. So you've incorporated that into your business, right? Yeah, pictures I'm, are key right now. Yes, I'm wondering. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about your mindset because as a business development coach, mindset is something that comes up for every client. And as you watched COVID nineteen roll in and you watched the students leave campus, and we're all watching, like what's going to happen next? Tell me a little bit about some of the the mindsets stuff that you had to deal with in your mind about this? Yeah, well, obviously it's extremely sad. Um, the people dying, um, you know, it just, it blows me away when you think about from a virus, so many people are dying and how contagious and how little we know even to this day. Right. But as a business person, A, I find it infuriating that people are still using COVID as an excuse for poor customer service. I don't know if you've called the bank lately or an airline or your credit card, <laughs> but they put you on hold forever. If you could get through, I don't know, people don't seem to care. It's like, well, due to COVID, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is the life we have now. Don't give me that excuse anymore. Nice. 
I love um, that. So you, so don't use COVID as an excuse. In fact, you did the opposite. COVID came right. in and you ramped up your customer service. You added well, COVID hours. is a problem. It gets back to what we said in the beginning. COVID is a problem. How do you solve that problem? Yeah. See a problem, solve a problem. You know, whoever figures out a vaccine or, um, you know, uh, some kind of treatment once you have it, I mean, that's really solving a problem. Right. My problem that I'm solving is minor and small, yeah, but it's, it's those <laughs> everyday problems. Yeah, well, when you have 10 problems, small problems a day, you get grumpy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I get great compliments. Someone's father called me the other day because he only wanted to sign a lease for 30 days and most landlords don't want to do that. So I gave him some suggestions how to go about maybe ask for a lease that expires in December instead of like compromise, you know, see it from the landlord's perspective. Right. Again, differentiating yourself in the marketplace by being a human who can see both sides, has so much experience. Um, exactly. I think you're just such a great example of somebody who has longevity in entrepreneurship and sees every challenge as an opportunity for growth. The other yeah. thing I'm guessing is, um, you know, by you talking to these, like to, to this dad that you were talking to, I'm, I'm not sure that that's going to make you money immediately, but right. it's, an, it's an investment in your reputation, right? Exactly. It's an, it's an investment. And I think that that's something important that um, entrepreneurs need to remember that how we show up during this pandemic, people are going to remember that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've been through two other crises in this area. One was right when we started and I, it was back in 1998 when the, oh, the storm, storm came through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it hit the university area hard and people were trying to call their kids before cell phones and all the landlines were down in 98 after that. Trees had knocked down and parents were panicking because they were living X amount of miles away. They know we had some kind of storm. Was their child okay was the question. And that's how Syracuse University started an off-campus housing office up on campus. They never had it before, but they figured in crisis, we need, we have 10,000 people living off campus up at SU. Yeah. Um, and they needed to figure out how they could keep an eye on the off-campus students, even though they're not making money on the housing part. Yeah. Obviously, they're making money on the they tuition. Investment, sure, in the kids. Yeah. And then what was the so, second, um, that was the 1998 Labor Day storm, and then what was the oh, second? Oh, and then it wasn't in our area, but uh, Tulane University, when they had their um, weather, uh, they had a shut down Tulane, and Syracuse University called me up and asked if I would tweak my website and get people to list what would be available for Tulane students. SU offered Tulane students to come here, uh, Tulane University, in order to um, not miss out on the college year. Right. So we tweaked our business and reached out to the community and people were amazing. Um, you know, it's the beauty. Again, I didn't make money on it, but it was rewarding to see people in the community open their homes for free, some of them would offer Tulane students, come live with me for the semester for free. So um, it, it was, you know, nice to be able to be there in a crisis for others. Over and over, I hear you basically saying, my business is built on relationships, the relationships I have with landlords, the relationships I have with the university, the relationships I have with parents who probably refer me to other parents in the future. Um, right. I always say to my clients, if you're not building relationships, you're not building a business. It's very important. And so I think you are a great example of somebody who's done that for a yeah. very long time. So thank yeah. you for being that in our community. Yeah. The problem with the um, one of my customers, the non-paid renters, mm -hmm. is they change every year, or at least every two or three years, because they graduate and age sure. out unless they go on to master's and doctorate. But um so that's a challenge because the landlords, most of them have used me since 1997, you know? Yeah. So that's easy and a no brainer. And I'm very cost effective for them. <laughs> My ads are so reasonable. In fact, they're the same price that when I started in 1997, 
that's the same price 23, wow. four years later. I haven't raised my price. Wow. And people used to say to me back then, landlords, that it was a bargain mm. back then. So, but I feel strongly about keeping the prices down because I did start the site to save money on my own advertising because I was a landlord. Right. And I was, I didn't want to pay exorbitant fees for advertising. So but, one last question I have, um, what lessons would you share with other entrepreneurs who maybe haven't been like pinged around as much as you have, who are feeling a little beat up right now, um, mm. to help them who are struggling to stay resilient? Do you have any advice or lessons that you want to share? Yeah, I would say um, truthfully that obviously see what problems your customers are having, not just what you're having, mm -hmm. but what, pro co what problems are your customers having? Talk to them and try to solve it for them. Even if there's not a financial reward behind each mm -hmm. problem you solve, but again, see a problem, solve a problem. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the, the best one is spend less money mm -hmm. uh, in your business. I mean, we think that we need to throw a lot of money at things. And that for me is the easy to throw money at. The hard part is stepping up and being there truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, that's free to put your time in. Um, network more on LinkedIn. I found mm -hmm. that so many people were home and on LinkedIn mm -hmm. that I used to ask someone to, you know, I, you don't call a friend, but join their network on LinkedIn. Uh, and I used to find people would take a week to connect. Now it's almost instantly. Right, right. I mean, some people, and LinkedIn is a wonderful, I think, tool for businesses. I think it's better than Facebook, Facebook and yeah. Instagram, but all of them together are important. But yeah. right now, the results I'm getting on LinkedIn are fabulous and fast. Um, fast is nice when you put time in yeah. Uh, to see a result right away. Yes. It makes you feel better. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am, even though I said I'm trying to spend less, I'm considering, um, uh, here's a shout out to Syracuse.com. They're matching advertising. I don't know if you saw that. No. So if you spend, I don't know, 350 a month on advertising, they say they'll match it. They're doing a grant for a million or two, mm. million and a half, million and a quarter, I forget what it is. And they're asking people to sign up for it. And I'm trying to figure out, you know. Is that worth your? Because, yeah, because it's 50% off basically, if yep. it's worth spending money on. But I do believe in spending less money and putting yourself out there. But for businesses that do have money and don't have time, it might be a local avenue to try. Yeah, so, right, right, right. Um, Any other but advice? The last, yeah, the last thing I was going to say is, um, aside from there's no excuse for... Um, Bad customer service. You know, there's no COVID excuse for poor service or, right. you know, uh, step it up. See COVID mm. as a silver lining almost, mm -hmm. that it's a problem and try to make that problem mm. better, a little better in everybody's day. Uh, don't worry about the money behind it. That, I believe, will come. Mm -hmm. um, and just keep tweaking your business. Yes. Listen um, to your customers. You are the queen of that. Thank you. Yes. Um, how can people find you? If, if, if they are interested in learning more about Orange Housing, where do, where do they go? So it's orangehousing.com, pretty simple. Yeah. Our Instagram is orangehousing New York because someone in Korea or Japan had orange housing. Okay. So it's orangehousing.com. Um, and I'm always willing and available to email and talk to local entrepreneurs. Um, and I love seeing people succeed. Our website, one thing we're doing also, if you have another minute, is yes. I started doing um, Team Syracuse, which yes. is to strengthen uh, local businesses. And it doesn't matter if you're small or large, if you're local and in this community and matter to the community. I mean, we're stronger together. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I believe in promoting local businesses, even if they're my competition, um, I believe in promoting local businesses and I'm doing a barter basically. It's free, 
So if someone posts our insignia, Team Syracuse, on the bottom of their website, we link back to them if they link to us. And the, the insignia came out great. It was a local resident who designed our Team Syracuse insignia. And it's different buildings in Syracuse. Uh, one of them that is um, the uh, downtown Syracuse, um, geez, I'm losing thought. I know, I but, can't remember uh, the name of either. I City Hall. It it's City head. Hall yes, we have. We have buildings up at Syracuse. But it came out great. I was really impressed. And it's, again, something I'm not going to make money on. But it should give the people we're partnering in, we're hoping it raises them in the Google search because mm. one of the things Google says helps um, raise where you are in the Google search. So if you're on page 10, nobody ever gets to page 10 when they right. Google right. a business. But if you could get closer to page one, uh, which luckily because we've been in business for 23 years and have the domain, a lot of times we'll show up on the first or second page right. for That's when wonderful. people Google. Yeah, off-campus housing for Syracuse University. We show up right on top, and that's not a paid, yeah. Yeah, of course, so this is another way that your longevity and your iterating and your relationship building has paid off in your business. Right, and we've, we've networked with, for that, I think almost 15 different businesses, and we just recently launched it, and we're, we're not really pushing it, but um, I should promote it more because yeah. it's free for everybody and it's yes. a great thing. Well, I'm but it's check hard it out to. Myself. Yeah, we'd love to have you join. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, well, you know, it's just a cute little uh, Instagram logo. And then you it. go in our directory and we link back to your website. Brilliant idea. And um, yeah, I it's really, it. yeah, we have a directory for businesses and for Team Syracuse. So you'd be listed in both. So what is the, how to get to the, t is it teamsyracuse.com? Um, it's actually on my website right now. Okay. It's orangehousing.com. And you click on, on the bottom, it says support local businesses. Okay. And, it, uh, and you could also see it in our directory on top. It's Team Syracuse That's directory. Awesome. So, I love yeah, so it's cool. And we're having fun with it. I'm just trying to have fun, make everybody's day a little bit easier if possible. Well, and I'm trying so to do our small part. Well, you are definitely doing that. Thank you so much for uh, letting Jen, me Jen, it was fun today. chatting with you. It's always fun to chat with you too. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your insights. And I love having another connection to a local businesswoman who's been in business for such a long time. So well, it was great chatting with you. And any way we could help, I'd love to help you and partner with you. And I love listening to your, um, not podcast, but Facebook. Um, oh, Facebook my interviews and I just signed up for a few of your free giveaways so oh, good. Good. we love what you're doing That's and nice. um, you and Digital Hive and Good Monster are the three there's so much free info out there right now yes. I have to drill down I understand. but yeah you're one of the three and the only female entrepreneur that um, I like oh. to follow so well, thank you that means a lot thank you so much yeah it's yeah. cool and I've learned a lot from you so and I know you're giving away freebies and I do appreciate it oh, and yeah my pleasure yeah it's... I appreciate that Donna okay well, it's nice chit-chatting. Nice to chit-chat with you too. Everyone, thank you for joining this interview. I hope that you've learned that there's more to running your business than thinking about your solution. You really have to focus on your clients, your customers, and build relationships. And Donna has embodied that, that um, example so much for us. So again, thanks, Donna. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Talk to you. Thanks Bye, for everyone. inviting me. Yes, my Bye. pleasure. Bye.